Hi, I am Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be talking more about organic nomenclature, how to go about naming organic compounds. We are going to talk about how to name more complicated uh, organic molecules. So, why don't we uh, just pick up where we left off, I guess, last time, and uh, just very quickly see how well you did um, in learning how to name alkanes. So, how would we go about naming this puppy here? Remember, very importantly, you look for the longest carbon chain first. That's always the first thing you do. You've got a variety of possibilities here by the look of it. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that way. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that way. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that way. And in fact, nine takes it. We go back to our counting to 10 in chemistry. We remember that uh, the prefix for nine is non. And we look at the molecule and we say, right, uh, there are only carbon and hydrogen single bonds here, or single bonds involving carbon, carbon, and carbon, hydrogen. So therefore, it is going to have the suffix A-N-E, non-ane. And then we look for the substituents and we look for the numbering of the substituents, okay? So what have we got in terms of these? Well, we found out that uh, nine is our longest. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the carbon chain there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or we could put nine here, but it makes no difference as we saw in the last uh, episode. Likewise, we could put number one in red here and it still makes no difference. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, let's look at our substituents. So uh, what have we got? We've got a methyl here, we've got an ethyl here, we've got a methyl, and we've got a methyl. So the, what we need to do is to give them the lowest uh, cumulative numbers in this case, okay? So what have we got? If we number in red, we're going to have a 2, a 3, a 6, and a 7. If we number in black, we're going to have a 3, and a 4, and a 7, and an 8. You can see, hopefully, that a 2, and a 3, and a 6, and a 7 beat a 3, and a 4, and a 7, and an 8. So we're going to use the red numbering. And one last little rule here is that when we have got a mixture of substituents, as we do here, we go in alphabetical order. Okay, so alphabetically ethyl beats methyl, so ethyl is going to come first. Ethyl is at uh, carbon six, so we're going to go six ethyl. And then we've got all of these methyl groups. We've got two, and we've got three, and we've got seven. So therefore we are going to go two, comma, three, comma, seven, hyphen, tri, and we're going to run out of room. Tri, methyl, just, non -ane. So in this case, 6-ethyl-2-3-7-trimethylnonane is going to be the name for that particular alkane. Okay. And you can go on and on and on with these, but <clears throat> we're going to get into more general um, naming now because obviously this is strictly only applicable at the moment to alkanes. So let's start off and look at some uh, more complex organic molecules. And let's find out that I haven't been telling you the whole truth to begin with, because organic molecules are not named only as a prefix and a suffix. We have a prefix, <clears throat> we have a suffix, and we have an infix. Now, hands up those of you who, had, who have ever heard of the word infix. Well, that's what we have in chemistry, okay? So, um, so there's three parts to organic names, essentially. And the reason that we said that there were only two was because we were only looking at alkanes there. And we will see how 
In fact, there's three parts to an alkane name as well, okay? So the prefix uh, signifies the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain. Okay, we've already seen that. So the prefix is your meth or your but or your non or your hex or whatever. Okay. Um, now, the infix is uh, determined by the type of bonding in the molecule. Now, with alkanes, we said that we only had single bonds everywhere in the molecule, only single bonds. Now, if that's the case, and we've only got single bonds, then the infix is A-N. Okay, so that is only single. If we have got double bonds, then the infix becomes E-N for double. And if we've got triple bonds in the longest carbon chain, that is, in the longest carbon chain, then we have the infix Y-N. Okay. Now the suffix is determined by the nature of the functional group and if any. Okay. Hmm. So what is a functional group? What do we mean by this? Okay. Um, let's have a look at that now. So this is important stuff. The prefix we're happy with. The infix we can pretty much figure out just by looking at the types of bonding in the longest carbon chain. The suffix a little bit more <clears throat> involved and so therefore let's discuss that now and look at what we mean by a functional group. Right. So the molecules that we've been looking at so far have only contained carbon and hydrogen in terms of naming. So let's have a look at a molecule that contains more than that. And here is the line structure of that molecule. Now, those of you who know a little bit of chemistry might um, recognize this as being ethanol. Okay. Um, and what have, what's our chemical formula here? Our chemical formula C2H5OH. Now, first thing, notice that I wrote C2H5OH rather than C2H6O because this gives us some information that this doesn't. The information that we get here is that we've got an OH functional group here. <clears throat> now, even though that is the uh, molecular formula, it doesn't tell us anything about the um, functional group. So that's a little thing that you might notice um, in your textbooks, in these uh, videos, etc., etc. So C2H5OH. Um, so how do we go about naming this? Well, again, first up, you're looking for the longest carbon chain. Longest carbon chain, this is pretty straightforward. We've got one, we've got two. So therefore, our prefix for this molecule is going to be the prefix corresponding to a two carbon chain, and that is going to be eth. Now, the infix, the next part. So that's the prefix, the infix. Now, remember that says, right, you look at your longest carbon chain. If it's only single bonds, the infix is an. If <clears throat> if you've got a double bond in there, or more, the infix is en. If you've got a triple bond, or more, in there, then the infix is yn. In this case, we're quite happy. Single bonds all the way, so it's going to be if an prefix infix, and now we want the suffix, and the suffix belongs or is determined by the functional. Group. Now, what the heck is a functional group? A functional group is a group of atoms that are contained <clears throat> in um, different molecules, but you always have that same particular group of atoms in a whole bunch of different molecules. Not brilliantly explained, but let's go with it. For example, this group of atoms here in ethanol, OH. We find the OH group in a whole vast, vast, vast number of molecules. Yeah, so what? That's, that's probably what you might expect. But the beauty in organic chemistry is that uh, it's very, very systematic. 
organic chemistry. What you find is that molecules that contain the same functional group tend to react the same. And that makes organic chemistry a hell of a lot easier because it means that you don't have to remember a thousand, a million, a billion reactions. You only have to remember a few because you know that every molecule that contains an OH group is going to react very similarly. Okay? So we call those certain combinations of atoms that tend to crop up quite a lot, we call them a functional group. Now this particular functional group we call an alcohol. Okay? And the thing about alcohol functional groups is that they are that, essentially. An alcohol functional group is an OH group. And on the end of that OH group, you have what organic chemists say is an R group. And R generally means that you've got some sort of uh, carbon there, usually. Sometimes it also means hydrogen as well. Of course, if this was a hydrogen, you would just have water. Okay? So <clears throat> here you've got some sort of carbon. It could be a methyl group, it could be an ethyl group, etc., etc., etc. But that is just shorthand for either carbon or carbon and hydrogen. So all alcohols have that particular functional group, ROH. And the suffix for an alcohol is ol, okay, coming from there. And so therefore, Going back to this example here of our ethanol, we have got the prefix eth for two carbons, we've got the infix an for everything single bonded, and we are going to have the suffix ol for an alcohol, okay? So, is that the final name of our compound? Yes it is, okay? You might be thinking, well, hang on, what happens if we write it like that? Is that any different? And the answer is no, it's not, uh, because that OH is attached to that carbon there, okay? This OH is attached to that carbon there. Those are depictions of the same molecule. Okay, you could write it in reverse or whatever, but it makes no difference. You can flip this one across, you end up with the same thing. So, those are the same molecules, so therefore we don't need to say where the functional group is because we know it has to be attached to that carbon. We'll see examples later on where that is not the case. But, in the meantime, the main reason for doing this example was to show that uh, we construct our name from our prefix eth, our infix an, and our suffix ol. So, functional groups. The alcohol is one of them. Okay, what are some others? Okay, so uh, let's have a look at uh, particular types of organic compounds because particular types of organic compounds contain particular functional group. So we've already seen, whoops, that alcohols, or just let's say an alcohol, will contain the OH functional group and the suffix for that is ol. Okay. Um, an aldehyde. Now you may or may not have come across these before, but these are again stuff that you have to learn. Okay. This is stuff that needs to be up here for exams and things like that. So an aldehyde contains this particular grouping of atoms, where R could be, uh, in this case, H or C, okay? So what have we got? We've got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, we've got a carbon single bonded, that same carbon single bonded to a hydrogen, and either a carbon or a hydrogen. And if you have an aldehyde, then its suffix is A-L-L, -L, okay? Uh, if you've got a ketone, now ketones look very, very similar to aldehydes. Um, one very important difference, C-O-R, okay? Now in this case, R is only a carbon, 
okay? And so for a ketone, we have the suffix O-N-E. Now, how are ketone and aldehyde different? They do look very similar. An aldehyde, because it's got a hydrogen on this carbon, aldehydes can only come at the end of a carbon chain. It's the only place they can be situated. Ketones can only, because both of these have to be carbons, ketones cannot be at the end of a carbon chain. That's the difference between them. The functional group, the functionality, that part of the molecule, that carbon-oxygen double bond is the same in both of them. It's just a matter of where it is placed along the chain in your molecule. Aldehydes, it is on the terminal carbon at the end of a chain. A ketone, it's on an internal carbon somewhere in the chain, but not at the end, okay? And the other common one that we're going to look at, carboxylic acids. And this is R-C-O-O-H, like that. Again, looks kind of similar to the aldehyde and the ketone, except now this group here is OH. And again, this means that this can only occur at the end of a carbon chain, can't be in the middle anywhere, it can only occur at the end of a carbon chain, and your suffix for this is oic acid. Okay? Now, <clears throat> in terms of learning stuff, those you've absolutely got to know. So those are the really, really common functional groups. Okay? So there's no getting around learning what they are. Learning also their suffixes, because we're going to do some naming in the next video, some more naming. Um, so please uh, be aware of that. <laughs> and again, as I'm uh, fully aware, I'm sure you're looking really, really forward to that. Uh, so more excursions into organic nomenclature in the next video. So until then, we will see you later. Take care.